Um, take a moment, if you will, and imagine with me. Um, you are in a tent. There are hundreds of other people trying to crowd into the tent with you. Um, there are lots of noises. There are people laughing. There are people yelling. There are lots of smells, some good, some bad. Um, and you can feel the excitement of everyone. Everyone is very excited about something. Um, and if you don't know where you are yet, if I told you you were about to witness the greatest show on earth, you should maybe know that you are at the Barn and Bailey Circus. My name is Lisa Colston and I am here to see me <laughs> to talk to you and inform you about Phineas T. Barnum to let you know a little bit about his life and his accomplishments in life. Um, he was born on July 5th, 1810. Um, he lived until April 7th, 1891. Um, he was born in Bethel, Connecticut. He was the oldest of five children. He was born in a poor family. Um, his father was a, um, a shopkeeper, innkeeper. Um, he passed away when Phineas was only 15. So Phineas began work at a very young age because when his father passed away, it left the five children and the widow totally penniless. So with Phineas being the oldest child, he therefore had to go to work and help support the family. Um, he got married at a very early age. He was only 19. Um, he married um, Charity Hallett, and he was married to her for 44 years. And they had four daughters together. Um, when she passed away, one year later, he married someone that was 25 years his junior. Um, her name was Nancy Fish. Um, as I said, he, uh, he had many occupations in his life. Um, he started out as a store clerk, which was after his father passed away. Um, he actually was responsible for helping to um, bring the lottery into Connecticut because he heard they heard the lotteries and he traveled to New York and, and brought this back. Um, he was a shopkeeper. He was a newspaper publisher. He actually published a newspaper that was called the Herald of Freedom, which was sort of a religious paper. Um, he was sued, I think, three times for libel, and he had to serve 60 days in jail for that. Um, he also was a politician. Um, he was Connecticut legislature in the 1860s. He also served as the mayor of Bridgeport, um, 1875 to 1876. Um, he was a museum owner. Um, he owned part of the circus. And he also was an author. Um, Phineas T. Barnum was the greatest showman of the 19th century. Um, he was very good at making money. And he wrote several books on making money. He also traveled around and lectured um, about making money. They did quite well with that. Um, let's see. Barnum opened the American Museum in New York City. This was in 1842. Okay. At this time, Barnum was broke. He had no money at all. But he really, really wanted this museum. Um, and it was very strange because he bought this museum with himself as collateral. Um, he said that he had, um, you know, really good references, and um, he had a big desire to succeed. And believe it or not, that worked. And he opened this museum, and it was one of the, the greatest um, places for entertainment in the world. Um, he owned this for 25 years. He charged a quarter to get in. There were all sorts of oddities um, that you could see in the museum. This happens to be Jenny Lynn. Um, she's known as the Swedish Nightingale. Um, he discovered her and um, introduced her to America. And they actually, he took her on more like a singing tour. And those two made lots of money together. Um, in his museum, he had oddities. He had a lot of so-called freak show. Um, people with any kind of abnormalities. He realized that he met a lady 
an African American, Joyce Hester. Um, he bought her as a slave, and people paid lots and lots of money to come and see her. And when he realized that he could do this, he then um, sought out different oddities for his museum because, you know, his option was to make money. This is Chang and N. Bunker, the Conjoint Simon's Twins. Um, this is Anna Swan. She was a giantess that was in there, and she's holding King Lilliputian in one hand. Um, and then in 1881, he merged with James Bailey and changed the circus totally as we know it. This is Jumbo, the main attraction that he purchased from the London Zoo. He actually purchased this elephant for $10,000. Um, and this was his circus, um, located at Madison Square Garden in New York. Um, he passed away on April 7th of 1891. Um, thank you for letting me share some of the aspects of Benny's Two Gardens life with you, and I hope you went to the museum.